Are you tired, worn down? Do you turn to coffee and soda as a little treat to help you get through the day? Even though you feel guilty because you promised to cut down on caffeine this year? Yeah, me too. Nowadays, it feels like caffeine is the new drug epidemic, shoved into every corner of our lives in increasing amounts. Coffees, energy drinks, heck, even lemonades are so full of the stuff that they're becoming outright deadly. But caffeine is hidden in more than just your food and drink. More and more recently, skincare products have been infused with caffeine to help brighten up the skin and supposedly give you energy. But that can't really work, right? I can't just up and replace my daily Diet Coke with a scrub down of a special face lotion, can I? In a world where we need to be increasingly aware of our caffeine intake, is it possible that we're getting high on caffeine through our very own skin? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the show packed with more energy than a jumbo can of monster. If you've been subscribed to the Theorist family of channels for a while, you know that I have myself an addiction to Coke. Diet. Coke, that is, the, the soda brand. Don't demonetize me for that one, YouTube. I've had a love-hate relationship with the soda for years, and I've tried to quit it multiple times, only to wind up replacing it with yet another diet-based soda. It is bad, my friends, and not just as an example to Ollie, but for my health. While I've never experienced any sort of negative health effects from drinking too much soda, I know that drinking a whole load of sugary chemicals ain't great for my body. And so after a year spent covering the caffeine epidemic over on Food Theory, it's now 2024, I'm starting to retire from the channels, and I'm finally finally prioritizing my health first. And step number one in that process is dealing with my caffeine problem. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this episode about caffeine on style theory? Matt Pat's getting senile in his old years. He announced that he's handing off the hosting role here to Amy and suddenly he can't keep his channel straight. But no, we're actually here for a very specific reason, skincare. You see, for years I've seen ads for caffeinated products that are meant to energize and revitalize the skin. And that's always made me really curious. How much caffeine would you actually be able to get from these sorts of products. Could a relaxing face mask also replace your daily cup of coffee? Is infusing your skincare creams and serums with caffeine actually doing anything? Or is it just a bunch of marketing hype trying to sell you an overpriced beauty product? That's the test that we've done for you today. And by we, I mean me and my very willing volunteers. I'm already feeling it. This is not conducive to working the things I do for you. We appreciate your sacrifice, Tom. Joining me in this caffeine cleanse are some familiar faces from around Teen Theorist, Amy, Casey, and Tom. All of us have very different relationships to caffeine, and all of us are very happy to be here. Thank you, I suppose, for putting me through this wonderful experience. Now, for us to do this right, we first have to understand how caffeine affects our body. Caffeine is a stimulant, meaning it makes our body go into overdrive. When we ingest it, it gets circulated through the bloodstream and up to the brain, where it does most of its dirty work. The caffeine molecules bind to these things called adenosine receptors. Now, adenosine is a naturally occurring chemical that helps make you sleepy by acting as a depressant for your system. But adenosine and caffeine look almost identical to the body, which then lets the caffeine push the adenosine out of the way, take its spot, and send that highly focused energy blast straight to your central nervous system. And if that sounds like a drug, well, you're not wrong. It is actually considered to be the world's most widely used drug. In fact, just like other drugs, once the caffeine leaves your system, your body can go through withdrawal symptoms, decreased energy, mood swings, cravings, headaches. Clearly, this is gonna be a super fun episode for the four of us. And here's the kicker. Caffeine can take up to nine days to leave your system. So that right there gives us our first big step of the experiment. In order to see whether caffeinated beauty products give you energy, we first have to purge our body bodies of any caffeine remnant that may still be floating around in there. That means that each and every one of us is going to have to go a full nine days without it to get the most accurate data. No sodas, no coffees, no teas, energy drinks, or bobas. But while it can take nine days to fully leave the system, the withdrawal symptoms can start as soon as day one. So uh, let's just see how we're all sitting at the start of this little experiment, shall we? When it comes to caffeine, I am an addict. I think I'm less an addict to the caffeine than I am to the soda that I drink. I love the flavor of Diet Coke. I've been addicted to it for years and I have only seen me escalating in my consumption over the last year. I used to drink maybe like three sodas a day. Towards the end of uh, 2023, it's gotten up to about like six to seven, eight, Nine. It's a lot. It is a lot. And at the time I filmed that clip, I didn't even realize how much it actually was. The FDA recommends consuming no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. When it comes to Diet Coke, the average can has about 46 milligrams, which is about 20 milligrams less than the caffeine in a shot of espresso. So not all that bad until you start adding in more cans. At the rate that I was downing Diet Coke, I was hitting that 400 milligrams almost every single day through soda alone. And that's not including any of the other sources of 
caffeine that just exist in the world around us, in places like, say, chocolate. I recognize that I have a problem. I recognize that caffeine is in more of the stuff that I'm consuming, and so I want to cut it out. That said, I was a bit of an outlier in our little group. When it comes to everyone else, they prefer their caffeine to be dry roasted, ground up, and infused in hot water. I have, like, two cups maybe three cups in a day. I usually drink one when I wake up and then follow that shortly after with a slower cup of coffee. After that, it really just depends on the day. If it's a long meeting day, I might indulge in that third cup of coffee. I really have capped myself at two, three if I'm stretching it. I'm normally only consuming coffee, a cup of coffee in the morning to get me up throughout the day and like get me going. And then a cup of tea around three or 4 p.m. because British, obviously, gotta have some kind of tea in there. That's essentially all the caffeine I would drink. I won't have any caffeine past 4 p.m. On the days I'm not working out, I'll have one cup of coffee because that is all I need. I am one and done. It takes a little over four cups of coffee to hit that 400 milligram limit that we were talking about. Now remember that a standard cup of coffee is only supposed to be eight ounces. To put that into Starbucks terms, that's a short cup. Wait, you've never heard of a short cup? Well, that's because no one ever gets it. It's even smaller than their tall cup. You know, their version of a small which has 12 ounces. Yeah, so a tall Starbucks coffee is already delivered you almost two full servings of caffeine. Looks like Tom and Amy aren't shaping up to be much better than me. Speaking of shaping up, Mr. Workout over here is putting us all to shame with his one cup of coffee a day plus his fitness, isn't he? Days I'm working out, I will take pre-workout for my caffeine boost. <laughs> and there lies the catch, my friends. Over on Food Theory, we did an episode all about pre-workouts and sugar. But the basics of it all are pretty simple. Pre-workout's a supplement that boosts your energy to, quote, give you a more efficient workout. Think of it like going super sand. While caffeine tends to constrain the blood vessels in your brain, the mix of caffeine and creatine in a pre-workout, it actually widens your blood vessels throughout your muscles. This increases blood flow throughout your workout, making you feel super strong and energized for a short period of time. So I volunteered for this episode because I wanted to check from the fitness side of things if caffeine made a difference or not, if it was an energy thing or if it was just a placebo effect for me. Glad to know that we're getting the full gamut of the caffeine experience with this one, guys. Place your bets now as to who's gonna suffer the most throughout this episode. Is it gonna be me, the Diet Coke addict, Amy, the coffee gremlin, Tom the Brit, or Mr. Workout Casey. Now let's talk about what we're actually going to test here. First off, during our nine-day cleanse, we're going to be tracking all of our symptoms to see when they occur. This way, we can gauge two main points of data. One, how dependent our bodies are on caffeine, and two, what symptoms we should be looking out for when the only caffeine we have in our system would be coming from facial lotions. Then, on day 10, after the caffeine's been fully metabolized out of our system, we're going to divide the experiment into two days, shower day and spa day. On shower day, we're going to be testing a caffeinated soap and body lotion. This day is going to give us the most overall skin exposure in the hopes that more surface area is going to lead to more absorption and better results. On spa day, we'll be getting ourselves a little well-earned relaxation as we try out a caffeinated face mask, serum, and moisturizer. This then will test a highly concentrated dose of caffeine in one or two targeted areas. After each test, we're going to be tracking whether or not we feel the energy boost when it wears off and if we get enough to experience any sort of side effect. And hey, if you love seeing the team here going to crazy lengths to answer fashion and beauty's most asked questions, then you're definitely going to want to subscribe. We have a lot more experiments coming up in the future, including our longest experiment ever across any theorist channel. You're not going to want to miss that one. It is full of some very interesting practical advice for a very common problem. Anyway, enough promotion, back to the episode. Going into the first half of the cleanse, I was surprised at how fast we all started to feel the drain. The first thing we noticed, the headaches. I can tell you that right now I am working at a constant low grade headache where yesterday it felt like my head was going to explode for about three hours. I am not the type of person to lay down and do nothing in a dark, quiet place for an extended period of time, but uh, that's what I did because that's all I could do. <laughs> it was rough. Right now, ibuprofen is my best friend. So I've just replaced one drug with another drug. I do ibuprofen all the time. <laughs> Galaxy brain moves happening right now. Fun fact, some pain relief medications actually add caffeine to help relieve headaches. So, you know, couldn't have any of those. First two days, headaches constantly. I don't drink that much caffeine. I'm feeling okay now. The first couple days of this, I was having headaches and I had to take like some pain relief. Otherwise, I've just been very sleepy. I would say that the headache wasn't really that bad. I, I didn't 
really need to take anything for it. It wasn't usually for very long. So while Amy and I seem to have the most intense pain, we all felt it during the 24 to 48 hour mark. And that actually makes a lot of sense when you look at what a regular dose of caffeine does to your brain. Caffeine narrows the blood vessels in our brain, and over time, our brain just becomes used to that. During the period of withdrawal, your blood vessels start to widen again, and the increased blood flow triggers the headaches as your brain basically goes into a state of shock. When it came to sleepiness, that was one that we didn't all come to an agreement on. Two of the caffeine crew really felt the absence. After the second night, I went to bed, I think it was 9.30 and got up at 8, and so I slept for almost 11 hours. Did not expect to sleep for that long. My body naturally wakes up around like seven or eight hours. 8.39 p.m. I just fell asleep on the sofa and that never happens to me. Then went to bed, went straight to sleep and woke up in total 11 hours later. 11 hours! Normally I'm getting between sort of seven to nine. 11 hours is crazy. Looks like the adenosine army came charging back in to reclaim their receptors. Now it's hard to say exactly why Tom and Casey in particular had that big sleep, but it's likely that they just have more sensitive receptors. In general, I'd say that we were all operating at about a six out of 10. Casey and Tom were sleeping the days away while Amy and I were shoveling pain relief like there was no tomorrow. But then Amy made a discovery. So one of my other resolutions for January was to start exercising in the morning. I started that during the headache part of day three. I've had a lot less headaches the rest of this period. It's helped me be more awake. Who would have thought doing healthy things makes you feel better? I hate that that's the answer. Well, I'd love to blame Casey for infecting Amy with the fitness bug. It actually has a basis in science. A 2019 study found that people who gave up caffeine and then exercised during their main withdrawal phase managed to alleviate most, if not all, of their symptoms. It all comes back to dopamine. You see, when caffeine attaches to the adenosine receptors, it also releases a little bit of dopamine, which is why without caffeine, people tend to be less willing to deal with people's BS. Yes. Well, exercise does the exact same thing. So while our bodies were craving another dopamine hit from caffeine, Amy was able to give hers that hit through early morning exercise to replace the normal cup of coffee, curbing the worst of her headaches. Though she didn't quite get away scot-free. So I definitely felt a little more hazy. Like everything is slightly out of focus when I try to focus and work on a specific task. It just makes it a little bit harder to stick to it. And she wasn't alone. I found it really difficult to keep focused and to like do the deep brain thoughts that one has to do to write theories. You have to think quite hard and I was struggling. And Casey, Mr. Workout, yeah, he was feeling a lot less worked out. So I've had a couple of workouts since starting this cleanse. Usually whenever I've had my pre-workout, I can really feel it. Doing it without any sort of pre-workout it feels like it's missing a little something. I honestly am not sure just yet of whether that's just a placebo effect or just from the, the energy of their pre-workout and the caffeine with that. Maybe you should try some Sour Patch Kids. Another really good channel told me that one time. But enough of the suffering. At the dawn of day 10, we were all very excited to finally be nearing the end. I'm so tired all the time. I'm sleepy. I am also sleepy. Okay, we were all very excited and also very, very tired. So let's just jump into day one of our testing, which was... Uh, what was it again, Amy? Today is shower day, which means we're testing our caffeinated body soap as well as our body lotion. This is going to basically let us put as much of this over as many surfaces as possible to see if more surface area will really let us feel the effects of this caffeine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take turns hopping into the shower and lathering up. Ah uh, yes, the obligatory style theory shower on camera moment. Welcome to the club, Casey and Tom. It wouldn't be one of the final style theory episodes that I hosted without me inviting you back in to watch me shower one final time just like the good old days. Now, this would be the part where I want to tell you how much caffeine is in these caffeinated, energizing bath products, but I can't. You see, I checked the packaging. I checked the website. I checked everywhere I could, and nothing, nothing mentioned how much caffeine was in the product. The only proof that we had to go off of was the ingredient list placement, which, let me tell you, did not fill me with a whole lot of confidence. But we've come so far and gone through too much to stop now. Shower time, activate. So I've got here a vitamin C and caffeine facial cleansing bar. Now, this guy says that it's going to help support and energize my healthy glowing skin by boosting my skin's circulation. But again, am I going to be absorbing this through the skin or is this just a bunch of marketing hype? And the fact of the matter is, yeah, our skin should be able to ingest things like medicine or in this case, caffeine. But the question I have is, will it? Or will it be able to absorb enough caffeine to make a noticeable impact? Time to hop in the shower and find out. I got straight to work, lathering up as much as possible so I could get that caffeine boost that I'd been 
been craving for the last nine days. Casey and Amy, not far behind. Meanwhile, Tom took his sweet time washing his face. Straight after that, we applied some caffeinated lotions. Though it's worth noting that Tom actually had a different lotion than everyone else due to the UK's strict product policies. So not only was Tom getting himself a double dose of caffeine, but he was also getting himself a full helping of masculinity. Now that we were all a bit more awake and a lot more sticky, it was time to see if our pain and suffering was gonna be worth it. I have slathered myself immediately. I'm not feeling anything. Am I gonna be able to absorb the caffeine through my skin and stay awake longer and be more productive? We're gonna find out in a couple hours. We all went about our day. Meetings, filming, exercise. We wanted to make this as authentic of a test as possible and keep our routines the same as a typical day. That way we could give the caffeine time to put a shock to our system and then potentially wear off like a normal cup of coffee or soda would. So five hours later, it was time for the check-in. First up, me. Let me just say I was, um, unimpressed. So since my shower and lotioning this morning, I have noticed nothing, uh, literally zero. I've noticed that my hands are slightly softer because I used a hand lotion on them. Other than that, not a whole lot. My face may have tingled slightly a half hour after the shower, but that was the extent of it. And I think maybe it was because there was like a salicylic acid or something in that bar. Or maybe it was the citric acid. I don't know, but I don't think it was the caffeine. And as far as my mood and my energy levels, I think I would be here regardless. I was ready to write this entire episode off until I found out that everyone else was feeling something even if it was just a little bit. I do feel a little bit of energy. But I do feel more alert today and I've been more alert and you know, snappy jumpy than I have for most of the rest of the week. Heck, Tom even reported having himself a caffeine crash. I was literally driving home and I had a crash. I would not have physical crash, obviously, but I had a caffeine crash and I literally haven't been able to recover all day. I have felt just as bad, just as lethargic the rest of the day. It's been awful. It's not been fun. It feels therefore like the caffeine must have done something by using the soap and the lotion. That must have done something to my system. I guess it's worked, but yeah, the crash has been hard. That, that's that been rough. Fascinating. I'm a complete outlier in the group. It could be that something in my system didn't grab onto the caffeine as much. It could be that I'm older than the other three. It could be that the caffeine I'm used to isn't coming from coffee. But whatever the reason, it defied my expectations and turned out to be true. Caffeine products can, in fact, make a difference in your alertness. At this point, all I wanted to do was quit the cleanse, grab myself a cold diet coke, and go chow down on some fish food to drown my sorrow. But there was a small silver lining on the horizon. A theorist spa day. Ah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of our little caffeine experiment here on Style Theory. Today is Theorist Spa Day, caffeinated Theorist Spa Day. So you have me, Amy, Casey, and Tom over in the UK taking a break from our daily activities. And what we're gonna do today is actually hypercharge our faces with caffeine. You know, it's been a long journey here on YouTube, my friends. I've been making content, grinding away at it for 13 years. At this point, we've done somewhere around 2,400 videos in total, which is kind of disgusting and a whole lot. And so I deserve a day in my final stretch here to just lay back, relax, let everyone else do the work while I try to supercharge my body with a butt ton of caffeine. A brief moment for me to relax, decompress, and yes, try desperately to pump some caffeine into my system via three more supposedly caffeinated products. So after a lackluster performance on day one of using lotions all across my body to try and caffeinate me, today we're gonna attempt something a little bit different. We're flipping the script, as it were. Today we're using hypercharged caffeinated serums and creams all up in here, where it's less about surface area and more about concentration. The lotions didn't do enough, but these guys, these have a butt ton of caffeine in them, and I'm gonna put that butt ton of caffeine on my butt face in order to see if I'm able to feel anything. I am still doubtful, let it be known. I am still very skeptical, but hey, if it means that I get to spend like an hour of the day relaxing in a nice comfortable chair, listening to spa music with cucumbers over my eyes, great, I will take that. And if the conclusion at the end of this is, oh, there was nothing, well, 
I guess a winner is me then. So without any further ado, bring out the creams, the lotions, the serums, whatever I need to slather on my face. First on the list, a face mask. I had a distressing one from Target since my original one was either lost in the mail or someone in the office needed a mid-afternoon boost. Either way, Tom, Casey, and Amy, they wound up with, <laughs> well, you'll just have to see it for yourself. Why is it flesh colored? I've also never put one of these on myself. I guess, something like that. Oh my gosh, that's horrific. <laughs> so did you ever cut out the holes in the baloney to wear them as like a face? You know, like they do in Mean Girls? It's Mean Girls. Where, Damien, girls, where would... Damien puts the thing on his face. He just goes... All right, ready? No. Let's go. What in the Hamble Lecter are we doing? <laughs> I think I might have dodged a bullet there. But with masks on, it was time to relax. To complete the experience, I tried to fire up some relaxing ocean sounds. Do you want to try sleep sounds? Ocean sounds? Uh, yes. Great. Here's sleep sounds. Ocean sounds. I don't want piano. I want the ocean. I want the flipping ocean. <laughs> it's like a tidal wave. <laughs> it's literally like I'm being drowned by the surf. This is the least relaxing thing ever. I don't know what's worse, trying to relax to this, or Casey and Amy trying to enjoy a peaceful sunny morning surrounded by the sound of LA traffic. And Tom, well, Tom had to ditch the mask entirely. Turns out he got the biggest surprise of all of us, undiagnosed skin allergy at the age of 29. This was really just a race to the bottom of Misery Mountain. I feel like we as a company had to take a collective L here. We failed at relaxation. But 20 minutes later, it was time to swap out our masks for the last two items of the experiment, the moisturizer and the serum. To help supercharge things, we actually have a bonus vitamin C caffeine energy serum. And this is specifically called out as an energy serum. If any of these products is designed to make me feel higher energy, higher level, whatever, this is the thing that should potentially do it, right? It's supposed to brighten, firm, and depuff my face. So I'm gonna give this a healthy number of spritzes. I believe what I'm supposed to do is apply two to four pumps to the clean neck and face area and then follow it with a moisturizer. It says two to four. To try and give it like a little oomph, I'm gonna try to get like six pumps in there just to really work this in. If we're gonna feel anything, I feel like I have to really supercharge it. So here we go. Youth to the people. I missed. <laughs> I missed my face. Once the serum dried, we all went in with the last product of the day. But wait, we're still not done. We've got whatever this is, Origins Gin Zing. It's gonna zing into my face. This is an energizing gel cream with caffeine and also something that I can't pronounce. I uh, looked it up. It's called niacinamide and it's a fancy word for vitamin B3, which apparently helps you with skin radiance, the more you know. So with all of our serums and creams applied, they had one final chance to prove that they did what they said on the packaging, energize us. This is it, theorists. Will we come out victorious or will we wind up with egg on our faces alongside all the other stuff that we were piling onto them? It was time for the final check-in of the episode and the results were mixed. I enjoy a spa day. I love skincare. I love treating myself that way because I care a lot about my skin, but I don't feel like I got any boost from it versus like I actually feel the most tired today since like day two or three of this experiment and I can't fully tell you why. My best guess is that yesterday's products really worked a lot better than the ones today. Have I noticed a change in mood or in anything like that? I would say less so than yesterday. I basically spent the day reading, so it's been a much more relaxed day. So I was able to feel it, but it wasn't as big of a caffeine boost that I think I felt yesterday or an alertness boost that I felt yesterday. Instead, I noticed a smaller increase, but it was a much longer decrease, much longer. It took something like six hours for me to start feeling Oh, I'm getting tired again. Oh, I this would be about the time I need a caffeine top up. They must have some effect because I definitely felt a boost, but it was a much more natural boost compared to the stuff from yesterday. It was much more akin to what I get from coffee, just on a lower level. Felt more alert yesterday in yesterday's experiment. I felt maybe a teeny bit. I don't know if it was just the adrenaline of having the creepy slimy thing on my face, but 
Yeah, I would definitely say overall yesterday's uh, was stronger. But while everyone else was getting some results, I was back in North Carolina sitting in my attic alone and feeling nothing but disappointment. Do I feel any different because I absorbed caffeine through my skin? No. No, I most certainly do not. The most that I can say that I have is I have slightly greasy, highlighted skin as opposed to my normal kind of like dryish skin. That's what I got. Even with us putting like three layers of gel on my face, nothing seemed to do a difference. Like my skin feels tighter. Outside of that though, I feel no different. I don't feel highly caffeinated. I don't feel more energized. I don't feel like the caffeine did anything for me outside of get me to buy a bunch of products just off the hype alone. I'm not lying to you when I say that I was ready to throw in the towel on this one. Despite everything that we'd been through, write all of this off as just the placebo effect. Except there was one thing that was truly baffling me. The return of the early stage withdrawal symptoms. The headache, I'm not sure. It just came out of nowhere and was only for like two or three minutes. I'm guessing maybe I didn't get enough of as, as much of a boost today as opposed to yesterday. Maybe it's a lack of caffeine, so I'm getting punished for that already. And maybe he actually is. Let me put it in a context that you might be more familiar with, nicotine patches. When people are trying to quit smoking, what they're really trying to quit is their addiction to nicotine. Much like caffeine, nicotine also acts as a replacement for naturally occurring chemicals in the brain, changing how it functions, and yeah, producing that ever addictive dopamine rush. To help wean your body off of it, doctors often prescribe nicotine patches or lozenges. And that's exactly what I think we ended up doing with this experiment. Nicotine patches release a steady flow of nicotine into the skin, helping keep the symptoms at bay and easing the withdrawal. Similar to how Tom described the effects of the spa day products. They must have some effect because I definitely felt a boost, but it was a much more natural boost compared to the stuff from yesterday. It was much more akin to what I'd get from coffee, just on a lower level. The layers of product acted like a patch for him, giving him just enough to take the edge off. A nicotine lozenge, on the other hand, is a larger dose that works its way into your system faster. But while it may help faster, it also won't last as long, and it leaves you more open to feeling that withdrawal creep back in. And that's what I suspect happened to Casey and Amy after day one. That sudden crash that they experienced, that was like a nicotine lozenge, except it was a caffeine lozenge. But here's the thing, I still don't know why I was the only one unable to feel any of this. It could have been the combination with the lack of sugar, maybe my addiction level was just in a vastly different place than the other three, but in the end, what I did get out of this episode was probably more important than any definitive conclusion. Here's the thing, I did this experiment because I consumed too much caffeine. Towards the end of the year, I was drinking so much caffeine that I was concerned about myself, and I recognized that I was dependent on it in a way that I didn't want to be. And so the best part of this experiment was reducing my caffeine intake, going from a high high to absolute zero to help reset my system and recalibrate how I operate on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel better knowing that I'm not just ingesting this all the time. I also feel better knowing that I can stay up for pretty much all the time that I need to without just constantly downing caffeine. Yes, there's like maybe an hour, hour and a half in there where I start to dip a little bit, but for the most part, I'm pretty solid just like I am on caffeine. So I'm hopeful from here forward, I'll be able to keep my caffeine intake lower than what it was. Maybe not absolute zero, because it takes away a lot of beverages that I like. You know, I like the taste of Diet Coke. I like the taste of tea. And so it's one of those things where I miss the flavor, but apparently I don't miss the caffeine as much as I expected to. I'll probably try to mix those back into my diet in small amounts and just stay aware of it moving forward. The others shared a similar sort of feeling. I might cut down on the amount of caffeine that I'm ingesting. I might cut down on like my cup of tea in the afternoon. I might turn that to a decaf tea so that I'm not riding another caffeine high before my evening and going to bed. But one of the things I have enjoyed is that I've been able to sleep. I have basically been able to hit the pillow and just fall straight to sleep. It's been wonderful. I definitely consume much more caffeine than I used to. I want to cut back a bit. Uh, not that I consume a lot, but I definitely want to, to reel it back in a little bit. I'm going to bet that my pre-workout, when I take it again for the first time after this uh, gap without it, that it'll have that potency again. I think there are a lot of different ways to get caffeine into your system, and caffeine, much like everything, is about management and moderation. With great caffeine comes great responsibility. You need to really keep track of how much you're putting into your system because your system can get overloaded, and that's why we get the crashes and the headaches. I don't think all caffeine is bad. I don't think you need to cut caffeine completely out of your diet 
or your regiment, your life. I think you just need to make sure you're doing it in a way that's healthy and not becoming dependent. Much like almost anything, you just need to take care of yourself and find where your happy medium is. And my happy medium is getting my darn cup of coffee in the morning. Well said, Amy. So did we prove that the products are nothing but hype? No, actually, and I'm kind of surprised to say that. But I also can't say that I recommend them as a replacement if you're feeling that midday drag. Though they did leave my skin feeling very refreshed and radiant, so I guess they weren't a complete bust. My biggest takeaway from the whole experience, it's really easy to lose sight on how much you're relying on something to get you through the day. All week, we were desperate to go back to our usual habits. By the end, we'd cleared the hurdle enough to see just how far down the rabbit hole we'd gotten. And being able to prove to yourself that you're not dependent on a substance, that right there is a lesson that you can take to the bank or the barista. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. If you want to learn more about how your body works, check out our one sock episode by clicking the box on your right. Things get a little hot under the covers, if you don't mind me saying. Or if you're looking to learn more about what's going on in your face, check out the box on the left to watch our episode about what's hiding in your makeup drawer. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to play Alan Wake because I hear that it has a coffee themed amusement park. Yeah, I'm kind of desperate for a boost.